Hello, beautiful human beings. Human beings, human beings. Okay, so today's video is my coming out story. Often I will refer to myself as being a late bloomer. Hello, beautiful human beings. Okay, so today's video is my coming out story. Coming out of the closet. I am 33 years old, so often I refer to myself as a late bloomer when it comes to my story. It's very interesting, I think, to tell your own story because you just, it's something that you actually lived and to turn it into a story, I don't really know where to start. If you're a new subscriber, welcome. I talk about all kinds of things. This is one of the requested videos that um, was commented in one of my previous videos. So definitely always put down comments below. I read them and I will try to give you the content that you're looking for. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. Let's do this. So my coming out story. Um, like I said, I'm 33 years old and I didn't come out until I was 27. So not that long ago. Well, I guess it's been a while, but it doesn't feel like that long ago. Going back a bit, I grew up in a smaller town. Now it's grown into quite a big city, but when I grew up there, there was only two high schools. Pretty much everybody knew each other. Like my brothers played hockey. My mom knew every, like the moms all knew each other. Everybody knew the parents in high school. And the people at the bank knew who I was. Like I didn't ever have to give ID when I went to go like deposit money or something like that. You know, it's just that small town vibe. When I ended up getting one of my first full-time jobs, like my supervisor happened to be somebody that son was friends with my brother. And like, you know, that interconnectedness that's sometimes awesome in small towns, but also is a little scary because everybody knows what everybody's up to most of the time. So I was, I know a lot of my friends now when I ask them about their experiences coming out, a lot of them came out a lot younger. They kind of just, they like they hit an age and they just knew that, that they were like 100% gay. That's what they were. And they came out and then they dated um, women or men or whatever. And that was that. So for me, I can't really relate to that experience. I went through my whole childhood and adolescence kind of um, prescribing to what society, culture, my community kind of influenced me to believe was the normal, the social norm way to live. So, you know, I had crushes on boys. I, um, I had boyfriends intermittently kind of through middle school and high school. I never really had a long-term boyfriend or anything like that. Um, I was never really that comfortable around guys, but I also attributed that a lot to me being very shy. I'm an introverted person. I'm not comfortable around lots of different types of humans. So I just, I wrote it off like that. And after I graduated from high school, I ended up traveling for a year. I just had no interest in like forming any kind of relationships at that time. And then came home, I started university. And that's when I started my very first long-term relationship. And it was with a guy and you know we were really good friends very attracted to this person um, and when I say attracted I'm attracted to all people not always it's not means it doesn't necessarily mean sexually attractive but just attracted to their energy their personality um, and so I and then I ended up dating this person from when I was about 21 years old until I was 27 we we're together back and forth on and off over those years, but it was a very important time in my life in terms of, it was my 20s. So like most people I feel in your 20s, it was a bit of a messy time. I was, there was a lot of drinking and partying. I was going to university, trying to figure out how to, to live and survive on my own. And I just didn't, things never 100%, I didn't, I didn't know who I was, I felt, throughout that whole entire journey, right up until that age, I just still had no clue who I was. I didn't feel happy, I didn't feel fulfilled. One day, um, this woman came to town and decided she wanted to start a roller derby league in my town. 
And this was when I was about 25 years old. And at this time, I'd also started applying a lot of pressure to my partner at the time to propose because I was 25, I was graduating from university, all my friends were getting engaged, my siblings were getting married and having kids, and it just seemed like that was the next step in my life. There was nothing, I felt like there was nothing exciting to look forward to. So planning a wedding was an exciting thing, getting engaged is exciting, you get to do your photo shoots and show off a ring, and then you get to plan a wedding, and then you get married, and then after that you're gonna, you know, have a baby, and like it just seemed like that's, that is the direction that my life needed to go in, because if not, then I was just like this sad single person with no husband and no child and, and you know, unsuccessful, I guess. That's how I felt, you know, and I'm not putting that belief. I'm not saying that I was raised that way. My mom actually was one of the people in my life that always wanted me to stay single and travel the world. Um, but I just couldn't shake the thought that you know i needed to be doing what everybody else was doing it wasn't necessarily my dreams i didn't think that my dreams could ever be fulfilled so i just never saw it past this town that i grew up in basically so anyway this girl came to town and she started a roller derby league and i called my best friend and i was like this is something we need to do we, we always were kind of these black sheep alternative kids growing up. That's why we were best friends. We just always wanted to go against the grain. We we're kind of like these wild girls. We decided to join this league and we didn't even, we, we went to one meeting, we bought all the gear online, we showed up, they needed a treasurer. My best friend became the treasurer. I became the vice president. We formed a board. We just created this league. And through that sport, I started traveling outside of my town. I started going to other cities to compete um, and I met all these different people. And what that did is actually, it exposed me to people that I'd never been exposed to ever in my life. Um, and essentially uh, one night I was at a roller derby event and I sat at a table with about five or six um, gay women and I felt very comfortable there and I thought you know what does this mean what does this mean I want to be at this table I want to be with these women I feel like we really all connect I feel like I belong here and it was actually probably the first time I ever felt a real sense of belonging especially in like such a social setting basically I'm on one hand or in one reality I'm living in this smaller town and I'm working a full-time office job and I'm planning my wedding and on the other hand, I'm playing roller derby, I have this alter ego, I'm traveling around, I'm, hang I'm meeting all these different people, including a bunch of gay women, and just feeling really excited about my life and what the possibilities could be. And eventually it all came to a head. <sighs> I don't know if this isn't making sense or not, but basically one day I was at an, an event, you know, with a bunch of my roller derby friends and a bunch of gay women and queer, queer people. And I just knew that there was something there that I needed to explore. And it was definitely a very terrifying realization because it was a person, it was exploring a part of myself that I never knew existed and I had absolutely no connection to and I was it's almost like another human being and I I remember I remember I was back at home um, having a wedding planning night with all my family there helping me sister mom mom-in-law sister-in-law and I re remember having this like out-of-body experience where like I just my I felt like I floated out of my own body and was watching myself planning this wedding that I didn't want anymore and I was so scared because I didn't know what to do because I was so scared to let down so many people and I I'm sure so many of you can relate that you just think people are going to be horrified or just not take you seriously or 
not want to be around you or be mad at you. Um, and I literally had bought a dress and booked a venue and my wedding was happening in like months. And I realized I had to tell my partner that I didn't want to get married anymore and tell my mom and my sister and all my friends and all our mutual friends. And it was, I didn't even think I was gonna cry, but I, cause I just honestly haven't told this story that often. Like, I don't talk about it. Okay. So, after that day that I had that experience of being like, realizing for sure I didn't want to get married, um, the first thing I did was reach out to my sister. And I just, there's a, there's a lot of confusing emotions that come with that, especially I feel when you're older because you think you've mapped everything out for yourself and it basically meant I was turning my whole life upside down. <laughs> and I told my sister first and she, I, I told her on Facebook and I basically just said, um, she'd recently gotten proposed to and I basically said, do you want to have a wedding? Um, because I don't want to get married anymore. And I didn't really say specifically that I was gay or that I, because I didn't know that at the time. I wasn't ready to know that. But I just knew that I needed to stop this train as soon as I could. And my sister is amazing and she actually just like took over all my wedding planning and she basically got married instead <laughs> on the same date, the same venue. Like she definitely changed a lot of things, but it helped that helped to alleviate a lot of um, stress on me because, you know, I'd sent out this invitation to save the date for my wedding to all these relatives and everything. And she basically was like, no, no, keep the date. Just different, different girl getting married. And at, after that, I basically um, dove headfirst into playing roller derby. In that roller derby community, which um, a lot of that community didn't realize my situation. I didn't tell anyone about me being straight, me being engaged, me calling off a wedding. So what happened was when I, I decided to try out for a roller derby team in Vancouver and right around that time and I made the team and I decided that I needed to get out of the, the town I was living in and leave my job that I had had for about eight years. And I just had to get out of there because I couldn't deal with all these people in my life, not just family, not just friends, but like the lady at the bank, the, my supervisor at work, like I just didn't want to come out to everybody all at once. So I just, just I didn't know that, but that's looking back, I understand it now, but then I just need, I, I just ran away, I ran. As soon as I could find a different job and I just, you know, packed up my stuff and you know, I said my goodbyes and I and I left. And one thing I can say is that my partner, my ex fiance, has always been um, so supportive and never made me feel bad about that time in my life and was so patient and that meant a lot to me. Um, so I moved out here and got a new job and started just skating a lot, playing roller derby all the time. I traveled, you know, I dabbled in relationships. <laughs> I failed at relationships, you know, I just, but it was like this whole self exploration thing that I didn't realize that I needed to do. And, uh, you know, it was a hard road for sure because um, during that time when I moved out here, I kind of just like sent emails to my siblings and my parents explaining that I was, you know, wanting to be in a relationship with another woman. And mostly my family was just concerned, but I was very defensive and protective of myself at that time. So I kind of took it 
I took offense to their concerns because I felt like they thought I was going through some sort of phase or that I was being selfish or that I was like mentally not well when it was just really I was acting completely you know not like myself which was I wasn't talking to anybody I was depressed you know I lost a lot of weight and then I gained a lot of weight um, I just wasn't healthy and I was drinking a lot and making decisions that I would not normally have made <sighs> but <laughs> I'm not trying to make this a sad video oh my gosh I did not know I was gonna cry but um that's basically my coming out story and so I slowly came out once I moved to this to Vancouver I slowly came out to friends and family back home and every single time I spoke to someone new I was so I was not surprised but I was always wrong about what I how I predicted they would react everybody was like just so normal and loving and didn't treat me any different and you know um, I judged so many people before I gave them a chance because I was so scared to, to be who I was like I wasn't ready to accept you know who I was and it wasn't instantaneous either it was definitely about three or four years of kind of you know, going through some not great relationships and, you know, struggling, you know, on and off with my own self-acceptance, which is always, it's like a lifelong journey anyway. But I am happy to say now, <laughs> how many years later that, you know, I'm married and I have a, a beautiful partner now and, you know, I couldn't be happier and I couldn't be more excited about my life. There's just been so many amazing things that have happened since then. And I, that can be another video, just how I met Skylar and like how our relationship began and where how we got to where we are now. We're celebrating, we celebrated our one year wedding anniversary last year. So what I want to just get across, I guess, is that, you know, it's not an always an easy road. Obviously there's gonna be so many people out there that will tell their story that it's not an easy road. But um, the biggest, challenge I feel like I faced myself was just accepting myself and you know it was just amazing because as, as soon as I just showed the world I was happy and I was comfortable and I was proud of who I was nobody had an issue with it you know my mom my 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 parents my siblings my family my friends like they're all just wanted me to be happy and I'm just I'm, I'm happy to be somebody now that can hopefully, in sharing my story, help someone else um, in their journey or just help relate. Not every story is the same. We don't all know exactly who we are at whatever age and it takes time sometimes and give yourself that time and patience and just don't feel like you need to make any kind of like declaration right away as i've said in other videos i don't identify as a lesbian or bisexual i identify as a queer woman and that's who i am thank you so much for tuning in to this video and uh i hope it helps some of you out there if you have any questions or if you want to see like part two uh, me and skylar's uh, relationship and how it began comment below um, hit the notification bell if you haven't already because that lets you know when more videos are coming out. Subscribe if you want to. You don't have to, obviously. And um, thank you guys so much. I love you so much. And love yourselves. It's not easy, but it's worth it.